I think there should be regulations on social media to the degree that it negatively affects the public good. Right, we've got ourselves this app called TikTok. If you haven't heard of it, it's the hottest social media network of the moment. TikTok, make your day. Real people, real videos. Yeah, I hate all those other video sharing sites with fake people and fake videos. Anyway, TikTok allows its users to record short-form videos up to 60 seconds long. It's extremely popular with young people and has an extremely low barrier to entry. Pretty much anybody can make a video, just dress up in a Spider-Man outfit and do something silly on a soccer field for 10 seconds. Done. That's pretty much all you have to do. You don't have to be great at editing. You don't have to have high production values. You can just pull out your mobile phone and film yourself flushing the toilet, lip-syncing your favourite song, plugging in a power adapter and confusing the Americans, or dancing while you're at work. There is no expectation of a highly polished video like perhaps what people on YouTube have grown to expect. Point and shoot. Do something silly. That's essentially what TikTok is all about. And guess what? It's worked. Young people love it. If you're lucky enough to make a viral video, it might go on to be watched by millions of viewers in a matter of hours, allowing some users to achieve online stardom almost overnight. This is the new normal for younger people. These figures don't lie. TikTok is the most downloaded social media app bar none. It has over 500 million active users. Whether this trend continues or not, who's to know? But it certainly is hot at the moment. Before I talk about the dark side of TikTok, first, a bit of a history lesson. TikTok is owned by a Beijing-based company called ByteDance. They created a short video app called Douyin back in September 2016. The name literally means tremolo in English. Its popularity skyrocketed, and within a year, it had over 100 million users in China, with over 1 billion video views per day. It was time to go global. In September 2017, the app was released in other Asian markets like Japan and Thailand, and quickly became the number one ranked app in those countries. Popular video app Vine closed its doors in October 2016, leaving lots of users looking for an alternative. That alternative was Shanghai-based Musical.ly. ByteDance saw this sudden spike in Musical.ly's popularity, so bought out its competitor in November of 2017. In August 2018, it announced it would be shutting down Musical.ly and merging it with TikTok. The rest is history, as we say. ByteDance is now valued at over 78 billion US dollars, making it one of the most valuable private companies in the world. Now back to the dark side. The Skull Breaker Challenge is a recent trend on TikTok. I know these sorts of challenges could appear on any social network, but unfortunately, many of TikTok's users are kids who have very little self-control and are easily influenced by their peers. In this challenge, two so-called friends stand on either side of you. They jump first, and then you jump, at which point they furtively kick out your legs from behind, making you lose your balance and smashing your head on the floor. This group of smarties decided to try out the challenge on their hapless friend. He fell to the floor, striking his head quite severely, and was rendered unconscious. In the video, his friends could be heard laughing. Yahoo News recently reported that a child actually died from this stunt. It's sickening to think that we've somehow allowed this to become entertainment. Of course, TikTok publicly announced that they don't condone these types of videos, with a spokesperson saying, "...the safety and well-being of our users is a top priority at TikTok. As we make clear in our community guidelines, we do not allow content that encourages, promotes, or glorifies dangerous challenges that might lead to injury, and we remove reported behaviour or activity that violates our guidelines." But the biggest issue with TikTok is what they are doing with our children's data. As a Chinese company with links to the Communist Party of China, I promise you all Chinese companies have links to the CPC, because you can't possibly become successful within China unless you're willing to pander to the ruling Communists. Cybersecurity experts are warning that TikTok could potentially be used by Chinese authorities to influence and monitor millions of Australian users. Fergus Ryan, an analyst at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, told the ABC that parents should not be fooled by TikTok's similarities with other major, but US-based, social media platforms. He said, the amount of data that all these apps collect on their users is very concerning. But the key difference between Facebook and Instagram, and TikTok, is that there really isn't much of a firewall between Chinese tech companies and the Chinese state. 
Essentially, our children's data is going to a foreign country, with the potential for it to be used for nefarious purposes. TikTok, of course, are a business, so are responding to these criticisms by introducing new family-friendly features. They've recently released a family safety mode in the UK, which allows parents to limit their children's access to the app. This, of course, will be rolled out to other markets in due course. Anyway, that's my rant on TikTok. I'm not saying that it's a bad platform. Obviously, young people like using it. But we have to be careful how these big companies are influencing our children, and how and where their data is being stored. Obviously, none of us want children breaking their necks doing stupid challenges, so ultimately, parents have got to keep an eye on what their children are watching. We can't trust big companies, especially big Chinese companies, to look after our children's needs.